Hey folks, it's John with Cage Tropicals. Really excited to go back to the original setup for 10 Things. We have all kinds of plans for this series. Really big things coming out, including special guests in today's episode even. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you're gonna wanna subscribe to this channel. Make sure you enable notifications so that you don't miss future episodes. Trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss out on this stuff. With all of that out of the way, Let's spend some time talking about what I think is one of the best fish in the entire aquarium hobby. Here are 10 things you should know about Danios. Danios are crazy. That's really all that needs to be said. They're one of the most active fish in this hobby, and they're not only just constantly moving around, they're moving around fast. There's never a dull moment in a Danio tank, that's for sure. It's just constant chaos. You're also always gonna find them in groups because Danios are schooling fish. So if you ever come across a Danio tank, you're in for a show. One of the best things about Danios is that they're super easy to keep and that's because they can tolerate a wide range of water parameters. This doesn't mean they're a lazy man's fish. You still need to keep the water clean, but they're not overly picky about things like pH and temperature. This makes them fantastic fish for beginner fish keepers that might not know how to adjust things like pH for fish that are more picky. Shoot for a pH between 6.5 and 8 and keep the temperature between 70 and 82 and they'll be fine. It's as easy as that. You're gonna hear that word easy a lot in this video. Here's another great thing about Danios. They're pretty much compatible with any other fish in the hobby, except for the ones that could easily eat them. I mean, use common sense. When you go to the pet store, go to the community fish section, and pretty much anything you'll find will be good. Danios aren't really looking to hurt anything, and they're so fast, it's hard for any other fish to do any damage to them. That's not to say it's impossible though. Some fish are sneaky, but for the most part, you should be fine. Just stay away from fish that can obviously swallow them whole, like big cichlids and stuff like that. They might be fast, but that cichlid's gonna wait for the right opportunity, and then it's game over. Tank size for Danios is kind of tricky because there are so many different varieties of these fish. We'll get into all of those later. Pretty much every aquarium size has a Danio that'll work for it. You only have a five gallon? Celestial Pearl Danios. A 10 gallon? Zebra or White Clouds. 20 gallon? Rosies or Pearls. And there's even a Danio for big tanks, appropriately named Giant Danios. Bottom line is there's a Danio for almost every tank size out there. Just do a little bit of Googling before you pull the trigger on these fish. Make sure that they're compatible with the size tank that you have and you'll be good. There's gonna be a special guest coming up on the next thing that's gonna discuss this even further, but decorating a Danio tank is just like almost everything else on this list. It's easy. Danios are one of the most bulletproof fish in this hobby, and they could really care less about what you put in the tank with them. If you're setting up your first tank and you're throwing in a bunch of artificial plants, a Squidward house, and a treasure chest with bubbles coming out of it, they'll be fine. If you wanna put live plants in with your Danios, they're gonna absolutely love that. Fill that tank full of green and they'll be fine. Or if you wanna just have it be completely barren and have no decor in it at all, they're gonna be fine with that too. They're the most non-picky fish we've ever really covered. Just have a box full of water and you're good. We literally have Danios in five different tanks in our fish room and all of those different types of decor that I just mentioned are all in there. And guess who doesn't care? The Daniels. Hi, I'm Corey from Aquarium Co-op. I'm gonna talk about Danios in relation to plants. Now, there's really two ways in which Danios utilize plants. One would be for breeding, and the other one is just overall habitat. So when it comes to breeding, Danios are an egg scatter, eggs go everywhere. 
the more cover we have across the bottom, the more likely it is those eggs aren't instantly eaten. So things like uh, java moss, really dense cryptocorns down at the bottom there, all of that's going to allow those eggs to fall in the nooks and crannies. Then when they hatch out, they have a chance. Now most eggs will always get eaten, but you know if you want to find that occasional one in there, really dense planted tank will help you with that. And it's always fun to raise up a little baby. Uh, and then overall, when it comes to Danios, being they're super active and fast, we can slow them down with some plants up top. So maybe something like floating hornwort or water lettuce. Anything that's going to reach all the way to the top of that aquarium forces them to swim around and thus will slow them down a little bit, especially if you're ever going to mix them with other fish that aren't quite as fast. So Danios being super sleek and nimble, have to they can weave in and out, but we want to see that behavior and it's pretty fun to look at anyway. So taller plants will help you there and in general, going to keep a cleaner and better looking tank. So definitely recommend zebra danios and live plants. Like I said earlier, there are danios that can fit whatever size tank you have. There's teeny tiny ones like the Celestial Pearl and White Clouds, which are some of my personal favorites. These only get to an inch, inch and a half in size, making them awesome for beginner fish keepers that's probably gonna start off with a really small tank. There's the step up in size to the zebras and pearls, which can get to inch and a half to two inches for the fish keeper that moves up to that 20 gallon. And then there's the giant Danios. These are awesome because they look and behave like their smaller counterparts, but they can get up to four inches in size. You'll want to keep giant Danios in at least a 55 gallon tank though, because these things get, like I said, about four inches. They can get pretty big and they're absolutely all over the place. There's several other types though, so look around the old Google machine and you'll see that no matter what size tank you have, there's a Danio that'll fit it. Well, except for those people that keep fish in vases. Shame on you. I know this segment is going to sound very similar to the water parameter segment that we did, but there's one word that can describe the care level of Danios, and that's easy. It can be argued that they are the hardiest fish in this hobby. We've had Danios in tanks with other fish before, even as recent as just a few weeks ago, where an outbreak of something occurred, and before we could identify what the problem was and start to treat for it, we lost quite a few fish. But guess what? None of them were the Danios. They're just tough little fish. As I said earlier, keep the pH between seven and eight and temperature between 70 and 80 and you're good. If you're a new fish keeper, make sure your aquarium is fully cycled before you put your Danios in there. If you're not familiar with the cycling process, put a card up here to a video that'll explain that whole process to you. Get your tank cycled, get yourself on a good maintenance schedule and you'll be fine. Here we go again, sound like a broken record. Feeding your Danios is super easy. I've never known them to be finicky about food. They'll pretty much accept anything and they'll do it pretty vigorously. They're omnivores though, so make sure you give them a good variety of food. The best case scenario would be to feed them a variety of tropical flakes and pellets. Just make sure the pellets are tiny enough for them to fit in their little teeny tiny mouths. You can also keep some frozen foods like brine shrimp or mysis and give it to them every once in a while as a treat. I usually like to thaw out frozen foods before I feed them to my fish, but with Daniels, it's kind of fun to just drop the cube in there and watch them go crazy. It's this swarm, it's like a frenzy, I don't know, it's fun. Like I've been saying throughout the whole video, there's never a dull moment with these fish. Daniels are a schooling fish. We talk about schooling fish quite a bit on 10 Things episodes, but what does it mean? Does it mean they just don't like being alone? Yes, but it's more than that. It means they like being in large groups. This isn't a fish that you're gonna wanna grab one or two of and they'll be fine. If you're gonna put Danios in your tank, you need to be prepared to put six or eight of them in there. Don't be discouraged though. Maybe you're like, oh man, I was gonna get them, but I've only got a 10 gallon tank. I can't put six to eight of them in a tank that small. Oh yes, you can. Just stay with one of the smaller varieties like the Celestial Pearls or the White Clouds. You can put six or eight of them in a 10 gallon or maybe even a couple more and they'll be just fine. 
Daniels are really a lot of fun. Get yourself a nice group of them, put them in your tank, and let the games begin. They're just a ton of fun. I just absolutely adore these fish. That's why, like I said, I've got them in five different tanks. They're the best.